I've got a project coming up. I really wanted a thread mill. I want to do it in HSM. Let's figure out how to do it, folks. Welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. So here is the beautiful thread mill from Lakeshore Carbide. Awesome tool. We've talked about thread milling. We did it in Sprout Camp before. We've done it in Pathpilot. Pathpilot is great. It was by far my favorite way to do it. But doing it in HSM works is going to let us create multiple holes, our pre-thread operations, etc. I couldn't find any tutorials out there, so I figured it out, and let's walk through the process. The first thing we actually need to do is model the tool. And here is what we've got from Lakeshore Carbide, the three-quarter inch long single profile thread mill. And you only care about two dimensions. You care about the cut diameter of 0.495, and the neck of 340. So this is actually really easy to do in SOLIDWORKS and I think this whole little video is a great example of how SOLIDWORKS combined with HSM for me is really going to shine. I think it would for you as well. Okay, so sketch, new sketch. Of, I'm going to pick a line on the front plane. Now I'm going to go slow enough to make sure everybody can follow along. I, I like going fast because I dislike slow videos, but everyone I, I know needs to be able to uh, see what we're doing here. So I'm going to click, oops, click and drag a line just about anywhere, another line, and then come up, come over, back down, and, and like so. So I haven't really done anything other than create a bunch of lines that sort of look like the tool. Now click on S keyboard on the keyboard, S key on the keyboard, and you can choose this Smart Dimension tool. It's the same as up here, but hitting S brings up this menu much faster. Now, we know that's 60 degrees. That has just has to do with what all thread forming tools are. We also know that we want these two lines to be equal. So hit the S key again, choose Mouse, or whatever that Select tool. Select this line, Control key, this line, and then choose equal. That's going to keep them uh, the equal length. Now go back to the smart, smart dimension. We know this dimension to here is 0.49 divided by 2 because we're making the radius of the tool right now. I'll show you in a second. And then, oops, let's see here. Okay, hold on. I've uh, goofed here. 0.25, there we go. Start so do this one first, 0.34 divided by 2. That gives us the shank um, of 3.34. Th and then this one will be point, what do we say, uh, 495 divided by 2. There we go. And then the overall length we're just going to put for now is 1. It's actually, I think, longer than that. But I don't, uh, for this one, I don't really care. Now, go to Features, Revolve. And axis of revolution, choose this line, boom. Now we've got our cutter. How cool is that? Save this as thread mill. Now, I've already got the part made. Let's start from scratch. You'll see just how quick it is. New part, sketch, choose a rectangle on the front plane. And we'll just dimension it as, say, yeah, 3 by 2, doesn't matter. Extrude that down to 0.5. So now we've got a rectangle. Now let's go back to sketch, circle, and we'll put a hole of 0.75. We're going to make a 3 quarter inch, uh, we're going to thread a 3 quarter by 10 hole here. And we'll put that in the center of our part, so 1.5 by uh, one, and then features, extrude cut, and like so. So we've got a hole in our part. Now, go back to CAM, or go over to CAM for HSM Express. I, I happen to have works, but I think uh, the same would be true for the free version that comes with SOLIDWORKS. We're going to drill, and I'm going to choose my number nine drill. It's a half inch twist drill and we will choose our wall. I just, I'm just going through these four tabs here. And the next one is the depth. That usually would be fine when you select the geometry like so. It knows where the top and bottom of the hole is, except we want to poke through the bottom 
and sometimes for good measure I'll add a little bit to it, say 0.0 or 0.1. One of the criticisms I don't like about HSM so far is it seems to be inconsistent with where you use positive and negative integers. So here I want to increase the negative depth with that, but I use 0.1 instead of negative 0.01. Um, so you just have to pay attention. It's easy to see visually what you get though. And we will peck it, uh, partial retract uh, with 0.08 steps. Okay, that gives me a drill op. Now, if we pull up a thread mill chart, we see a number 10 drill is, uh, or excuse me, a three quarter 10 is 0.75 on the widest. And you would drill it out to something like 0.6875 for 50% thread engagement. So we'll do just that. So 0.6875. So what I'm actually going to do, this is what I think is actually really cool. It makes it much easier, I think, than other software ways to understand what you're doing. We're going to go back to sketch a circle, click our plane, oops, and we're going to find the center of that circle. And we're not going to snap it out there. We're just going to draw a smaller one and then we're going to dimension that as 0.6875. Choose our select tool again, click on the circle, and then change it to for construction. Now what we have is a piece of reference geometry, or it's a sketch that's not used to create the model, it's just there for construction purposes. So in CAM, we're now going to do a 2D milling, 2D adaptive clearing, and we will use, for me, tool 31, quarter inch end mill, and we will select that line we just created, and we'll make it go, I want to make sure I go down a little bit uh, further, so we're actually going to have the bottom be, from the model top, negative 0.51, and that'll push us just, if we look, just barely below, which is exactly what I want to make sure you go all the way through. So now we should have a drill that clears out some material, and then we've got the thread mill, or the, excuse me, the uh, 2D pocketing. And you know what? We're actually going to disable or change it. We don't need it to helical ramp in because we've used a drill to clear out that material. So it'll be faster if we actually just plunge, like so, and I'll do it in two depths of cut just for good measure. Perfect. Now, thread milling. Really easy, folks. 2D milling, thread milling. Library, we need our tool. So what do we do? New mill tool. It's going to be what's called a form mill. You'll see right here. Import file. How cool is this? Open that file up. There's the tool we just made. How awesome is that? Already has the dimensions there. Um, we'll set it to, you know, say just conservative 15 uh, inches a minute. We'll plunge it 10 and we'll call it 141. I think I just made it as 140 tool and that should be all we need. So we're all set on this first tab for tool. The model will choose the 0.75 inch wall, which is the OD of our thread. How easy is that? A lot less math where you, I think you can make risks. And we will start it, say 0.05. Uh, we'll, go, we'll go down a little bit further past the hole. That's too far, 0.1, like so, just for good measure. And then this is just simply the thread pitch. We're doing three quarter by 10, so, so uh, 10 threads per inch is one divided by 10, or 0.1. And here, uh, this is the only thing I think I'm experimenting with, is you can either use this line or the stock to leave as a negative to increase that a hair. So actually, there's another way. So we have a 0.35 or 0.75 inch hole. Let's say you need to actually machine it out to 0.755 or 5 thou over. I think you can do it the three ways. You can increase this dimension here. You can put negative stock to leave of say 0.005, or you can leave these at zero, go back and actually just change this from 0.75 
to you know say point oops there we go point seven five five whatever you want to do um, because when you're experimenting with thread fit which is one of the really cool things I think about thread milling also you don't want to mill uh, you don't want to try to peck uh, try to tap three quarter by ten in any mill let alone a mill like a Tormach so go back to our cam tab and we should be good Let's see if we get a simulation here hit play there's the drill. Here is our cleanup with uh, the quarter inch end mill to just remove the material out to the minor diameter of the thread. Looks like it did it in three passes. Take a look. Oops. There's our thread mill. Boom. Let's go to the machine, cut some threads. All right, let's rock and roll. Half inch twist drill, 1175, 5.5 inches, plunge in the Z, and then I'm pecking with a very short retract every, I think I said 80 thou in the cam. Works great, doesn't bird's nest, you didn't hear any chatter. I like that recipe. Switch to two flutes, quarter inch carbide end mill. Fees and fees on this tool are a lot more, I don't want to say forgiving, but that drill is real dialed in. Here, 5100 RPMs. You want all the RPMs you can get with uh, carbide and aluminum. I'm only going, I think, at 15 inches a minute here. You can definitely go faster. You could probably take a wider width of cut. You could probably take the whole thing in one depth of cut. I tend not to go too crazy, though, uh, because it doesn't uh, save me that much time. and. Um, this isn't a production run. So two depth of cut passes. This is opening it up to the point, I think, 6875. Getting ready for the thread mill. There's a uh, scientific term called the pucker factor, which is quite high when you're using a $100 end mill. One of the things I do like about the um, tool path here in HSM Works is that it uh, is much better than Sprout Cam was about when it can plunge in and wrap it out. And just the control of it, I think, is much easier to understand. The menus are simpler. Uh, I'm really excited about this. <laughs> just like that, folks. You notice we're probably going a little higher than we need to. Now let's grab a bolt. Look at that. Look at that, folks. Phenomenal thread fit. I mean, almost tight there at the bottom, but I wouldn't call it we'll use a wrench. Don't make fun of me. I mean, it's not, um, it's not the wrong cut. It's just tight. I mean, that's phenomenal. Now, if you wanted something looser, you could widen up that dimension we mentioned or you can keep it tight like this um, i think that's awesome that is the way to cut threads folks awesome hope you enjoyed that folks i love thread milling i'm really liking how it works with hsm uh, works or express now that i figured it out in solid works i've got a project coming up we're going to do a lot of thread milling and then i also decided i've had so many requests that we're going to start a new sort of side video series of walking through the basics of SolidWorks and HSM, hopefully to serve as sort of a reference library that's gonna get you making all kinds of different parts and, and I wanna use it on the lathe as well. Um, and we'll see how that ties in with Fusion 360. Lots of good stuff to come, folks. I appreciate it. Take care. See you soon.